Cammy's question is that how to practice let go with our children? No. And not only our children, I would also say spouse, partners, you know, people whom we love and care for. We deeply love them and we care for them. And how to have let go, especially when they're doing something wrong. And maybe they are harming themselves in different ways, in small ways, big ways. And you're concerned about them. And sometimes you're so concerned about them that you forget about your own health, your own sleep. And life is only about taking care of them. You know, seeing that they are fine and good and you know and then you forget yourself isn't it so something that I tell to parents and also to everybody you know who are in love relationships you know who live with people try not to possess people Try not to own anybody. Owner. Like I own this house. I own this car. This is ownership. That it belongs to me. This ownership brings mental suffering. it takes time to reduce that sense of ownership it is a journey it is a pro process right now I'm just speaking about it and you're just trying to understand that is the first step okay, and then with observation with practice with experience you will apply it in life so whenever you have a sense of ownership Whenever you have this psychology of ownership, you will suffer. So if the car will break, you will suffer because the car is mine. If the car is in the showroom and whatever happens to the car, you don't get affected. But now you have paid for the car and the car is there in your garage. And now if something happens to the car, you will get affected because it is my car. It is my house. It is my body. My. That is ownership. It's a psychology of ownership. It's psychology that we form over years by repeating my, my, my. That identification is so strong. Now the same thing. My son. My daughter. My husband. My. My. So this psychological ownership of people will also make you suffer. It, it, it doesn't mean you should not love them. You should not care for them. Of course, they are your son. They are your daughter. They are your husband. They are your wife. You must care for them. You must look after them. But without the sense of ownership. I don't own them. I don't possess them. Their life belongs to them. My life belongs to me. Their life belongs to them. You have to weaken the identification. You have to weaken the psychology of ownership. That will bring love. That will reduce attachment, control, and anger. Bring acceptance. Now look at your son and a daughter and your wife and a husband. 
as a human being as someone that i don't possess the son has come out from me the daughter has come out from me but i don't possess them i am not the owner of their life and whatever will happen to them or to their life is their journey of course i'm a part but i don't possess it i don't own it it is a psychology to be lived to be experienced to be practiced this i'm just explaining theoretically but these words will later make an impact bit by bit ownership and doership these are the two main problems doership which we will study in karma yoga when we study bhagavad gita doership i am doing it i am doing it you see i am earning money for you i am making this house clean for you i am cooking for you i am the doer i do it because i do it and i take the psychology of doership that i am doing it then i will suffer that's why i suffer because i think i am the doer but no i am not the doer because the sun rose at a time and now there is light and because there is light i am able to see and because there is air natural evaporation process and rain the food is growing and everything is happening and because everything is happening i am able to do something every day because everything else is happening so am i the doer only no there are many elements in the background which are playing so that i can do something but i am not the doer there is a cosmic force some force so how can i say i am the doer and i am the owner it is a whole lot of philosophy so you have to wait for it otherwise you no know, 